Good morning to you all. It's a great joy to welcome you as we gather today to meet with Jesus in our worship. A particular welcome to you if you're worshipping with us for the first time. The words for the service are on the screens, as regulars will know. There's also a QR code in the pews if you want to follow them on your own device. So let's take a moment in the stillness of this holy, sacred place to become aware of Jesus' presence with us, presence with us, as we prepare to shortly stand to sing our first hymn.
meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please be seated. Today we are celebrating the life of our church school. I've Holy come Trinity. here to record Ooh. the introduction. To That's coming in a moment. Our very um, own church school. We are um, celebrating our, our church school, Holy Trinity Primary School. Uh, some of you will know it as the Willows, which it was called until fairly recently. Uh, and I thought that rather than me standing here and introducing uh, what our church school is about, it would be better that you watched and listened to a recording that I made actually at the school. So we will now have the video. Thank you, Bernie. And I've come here to record the introduction to our service today to our very own church school, Holy Trinity Primary School. This school was founded almost 200 years ago by our church, Holy Trinity. But often people don't realize the connection. It's partly because the school is across on the other side of town. It's tucked away on a road called the Willows, which is near the station off the Ulster Road. But this school is really important to us as a church community. And so being here today helps, I hope, to set the scene for our service today, as well as reminding us of the importance of our relationship with our church school. So I'd like particularly to welcome those who are pupils uh, at our church school, who are many of them regular worshippers here with us. The songs and hymns that we're going to sing in our service today are ones that are regularly sung in collective worship at the school and so are well known and some of them favourites of the children. And every time we gather for collective worship at the school and Phil and I and Emma go up there regularly to lead the worship, there are some responses, some words that we use at both the beginning and the end of our time of worship with the pupils. And we're going to use those as part of our worship today. I'm delighted that two pupils of the school, regular members of our congregation, are going to lead those for us. So Luca and Florence, would you come to the front, please, for our opening responses? And those of you who are at the school will recognize these words. The rest of us are invited to join in with the response, which is on the screen. God is love. All the, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is love. love. And now Luke is going to introduce our prayers of penitence. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate, let us call to mind our sins. Thank you both very much. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So as a forgiven people, we stand to praise God in the Gloria.
Let us pray. Faithful Lord, whose steadfast love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to receive the gifts of your love new every morning in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our school motto is rooted in faith, we reach for the stars. And we're going to hear as our first reading now the biblical text, which is the inspiration for that motto. And in the creative corner today, we've got uh, a colouring in sheet which has the key quote from that text, rooted and grounded in love. And the passage is going to be read to us by one of the foundation governors of Holy Trinity School, so appointed by the church, which is Laura Taylor. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being, with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. to Mark. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them in his arms 
laid his hands on them and blessed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so in 1823, William Webb Ellis picked up a ball and ran and invents the sport of rugby football at rugby school. Franz Liszt, aged 11, gives a concert in Vienna after which he is personally congratulated by Ludwig van Beethoven. Work began building the British Museum, the building that we know today. A visit from St. Nicholas, or as it's possibly better known, Twas the Night Before Christmas, was first published. Charles Mackintosh of Scotland began selling raincoats, or Max. Of course it's from Scotland. And in Stratford-upon-Avon, the vicar is Reverend James Davenport, and the first free school for primary-age children is opened. Now, in the early 19th century, the Church of England sponsored most formal education until the government established free education and compulsory education towards the end of that century. And in 1823, in Stratford, the National School for Boys initially sited in Bull Lane, and later Greenhill Street, was opened. And it was part of, ready for this, the National Society for Promoting the Education of the Poor in the Principles of the Established Church of England and Wales. <gasps> Such a snappy title. <laughs> and although it began with a school for boys, that later created a separate school for girls. And Holy Trinity was part of the foundation of that school, with the vicar, Reverend Davenport, and the church wardens as trustees. In 1846, we're jumping another 23 years, in anticipation of more pupils, the national schools were re relocated to the corner of the Ulster Road. The new building had two separate schools, a girls and a boys, with a house on either side for the respective headmaster and headmistress. It had 300 places for boys and 250 places for girls. And in 1870, an extension was added, providing 250 additional places for infants. So the school was growing, supporting people. And it was a grand affair, as you can see, with architecture, both solid and impressive. The National School on the corner of the Ulster Road, it managed to survive mainly because of the strong support they had from the vicar and from the church wardens of Holy Trinity Church. And as you can see, it was still going in 1913, and the children there look as enthusiastic about going to school as they do nowadays. <laughs> oh, what a cheery bunch they are. Six years later, in 1919, the schools were combined to form the Church of England Junior School, housed in what had formerly been the girls' department. And it took on the name of the traffic light school because of the lights on the crossroad where it was located. Of course, the school is no longer there. And the site has become Scholar's Court, a nod to the previous building on that site. In 1973, the school moved again to its current site, further along the Ulster Road, and became known as Willows Church of England School, in reference to the historic piece of land that it was built on. 
And then in 2011, 2012, the school was further extended to increase the number of pupils from 331 to 420. And that's the entrance that we saw earlier and is still to this day. And of course, in September 2018, the school changed its name to Holy Trinity Primary School to recognise the link between the two organisations and the school and the church that was established 200 years ago. And today we celebrate that link that continues between the church and the school. Our current vicar is still on the Board of Governors. Isn't he lucky? <laughs> and instead of two wardens, two members of our congregation are the governors, foundation governors. We've got Jane, who'll be leading the prayers later, and Laura, who sang, who sang, led our first reading. It was as if it was sung, it was beautiful. And our first reading that Laura read from Ephesians, Ephesians inspired the school's vision. Rooted in faith, we reach for the stars. And I wonder if 200 years ago, when meetings were taking place to discuss having a school for younger children here in Stratford, that they thought that two centuries later that would be, be, that would be celebrated what they started in the church that they led and worshipped at 200 years ago. Maybe they had a service to celebrate the start of that new school. A school rooted in faith and rooted in love, enabling Christ to dwell in their hearts. And of course, it's lovely to hear the history of the school, but that's the past. We need to look to the future. And even if you don't attend the school, another school, whatever, maybe remember what you got from your school, what roots, what foundations you gained. Because our reading from, from Mark's Gospel is a reminder of how children were treated in Jesus' time. They were not valued or had a place in society. Yet perhaps the word of Jesus inspired those who began our school. In the 19th century, children, especially of the poor, were still a commodity, an extra pair of working hands. It was a radical thing to stop them working and to give them an education. Remember in the time the school was running, there was still a workhouse in Stratford that children were in. And it wasn't until nearly 60 years after beginning the school in 1880 that it became a legal requirement for children to attend school. So it was a radical thing, a radical change. Just as Jesus was radical, so were the people beginning that school. And do we have the courage to be radical in our lives? To change the lives of young people around us? To be radical in laying the foundations of God's kingdom? It's sometimes said that one person cannot change the world. But 200 years ago, one man picked up a ball and ran, and now we have rugby. 200 years ago, someone began selling raincoats in Scotland, which people still wear or wear something inspired by. 200 years ago, one person wrote a poem that has been part of families' Christmases for 200 years and has inspired films, TV programmes, even giving us a better understanding of Father Christmas. And 200 years ago, a person decided to start a school that would educate and nurture the faith of thousands of children so far. So what difference will you make? Listening to our readings, listening to the words of Jesus, to be that change in the world. As rooted in God, we reach for the stars. Amen. Amen. During our prayers, the response to the words, Father of all, is, hear your children's prayer. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may our lives be rooted in your love and grounded in the truth of the gospel so that we might have the strength we need to follow you. May your love be at work in our lives and especially through Holy Trinity Primary School. Father of all, hear your children. Loving Father, we thank you for all who are part of our school. We pray for the pupils, parents, teachers, the head Mrs Herrero, and all other staff and governors. Give all pupils the comfort and confidence to be empowered to ask for help. Grant them your encouragement, wisdom, and peace. Father of all, Amen. strengthen teachers, we pray, who have heavy workloads. May they support their students, aspiring to the highest standards, playing to strengths, helping with struggles, motivating them to reach for the stars. Father of all, Amen. Father God of peace, we pray for those places in the world where there is conflict and suffering. We, play, we pray especially at this time for peace in the Middle East and Ukraine. May those with power and influence to make a difference work to end violence and protect innocent lives, especially we hold before you the children. Father of all, Comfort and restore those living under shadows of unhappiness, abuse, fear or pain. We hold before you anyone we wish to pray for today. And our prayers are asked especially for Harry Lomax. Father of all, Heavenly Father, hear us as we commend to you those who have recently died. Among them, Marlene Johnson and Will Hawkes. And those whose anniversary of death falls this week, including Colin Hilton. Bring peace and strength to those who mourn their loss. Father of all, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Luca's going to help with the peace in a moment. So, Luca, do you want to come forward to the altar? And would the rest of you please stand? Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We say to each other, peace be with you. Okay. Peace be with you.
Blessed be God, who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Lord of all life, who created the universe, where all living things reflect your glory, you give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You made us all, each wonderfully different, to join with the angels and sing your praise. sit or kneel. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son. He gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us, Christ's body and his blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord and my God. Let us pray for the courage to be radical followers of Christ as we use the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. We hope that everyone will feel comfortable participating in the sharing of Holy Communion, either by receiving the bread and wine, or if you prefer to bow your head and we'll simply say a prayer of blessing over you. At the high altar, there'll be a shared common cup for the wine, 
at the back of the church at the font if you prefer the wine will be dipped sorry the bread will be dipped into the wine for you please remain in your pew until uh, invited to move by one of the church wardens Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
as we recognize Christ's presence with us. So we pray together. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honor you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Delighted to welcome today a new chorister, a Kayla Vera. Welcome to you. Um, Kayla Vera has uh, transferred, as it were, from Coventry Cathedral, I believe, where you were a chorister before. Is that right? Leicester. Leicester. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought it was Coventry. <laughs> I, was, I was feeling like we'd had a bit of a coup there by, uh, by persuading someone to come from our own cathedral, but from Leicester. Well, we're really delighted to welcome you uh, to the choir at Holy Trinity. So welcome. Good to see you today. Um, right, harvest is coming up. The traditional harvest curry night, of course, it's a tradition now, um, is, is happening on Saturday. Um, there are a few tickets still available, last chance to purchase those. You can do that online through the information on the screen or through the bulletin. If you don't do computers, then is Christine the person to speak to in the orange jacket? Do please speak to Christine over coffee and she can organise a ticket for you. And the Harvest Festival service will be a week today, uh, the Parish Eucharist. Um, as usual, we will be um, inviting Harvest gifts for the food bank. So there is a list on the bulletin, or you can go straight to the Food Bank website, and they will tell you there, and on the bulletin it'll say, what are the particular items that they're in need of at the moment? So do have a look, uh, and we welcome Harvest Gifts to be brought and presented during the service next Sunday. This coming Thursday, the 10th of October, we have the Friends of Shakespeare's Church annual lecture. I'm really looking forward to this. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, Dr. Beatrice Groves is speaking on Shakespeare, Scripture, and New Life in Romeo and Juliet. Um, if any of you have seen the ballet of Romeo and Juliet, you might be inspired to want to come to this, but um, for whatever reason, it promises to be a very interesting evening. Uh, details are on the screens there. Uh, by the way, the notices are, are scrolled through during coffee as well, so if you miss anything, you can look out for it on the screens there. This time next week, I will have just landed in Johannesburg uh, at the beginning of my visit to South Africa uh, with Christian Aid, and then, as I explained last week, on to Cape Town to visit our new church mission partner, Holy Trinity's mission partner, Mazzy Corps, there. So I'm really very excited. I can't believe it's coming around quite so quickly. Uh, can I please ask for your prayers? Uh, prayers for safe travel for me and the rest of the group. Uh, prayers for those I'll be meeting, uh, especially from Mazzy Corps, uh, and prayers uh, that it might be a, a deeply enriching experience for me, for my own learning and reflection, which I hope to share with you when I return. Thank you. The words of dismissal at the end of the service are very important. Today we're going to use words, as I mentioned before, that are used at the end of our collective worship at Holy Trinity School, and they're words that you'll notice pick up on that idea of being rooted in God's love in faith from our first reading. So there is an extra response to say, uh, we have the logistical problem of all facing that way when the screens, you need to be facing this way. So just as a tip, have a quick look at the screens before you turn around so you know the words that you've got to say. We'll get there in the end. So our final song now, a primary school perennial. It always goes down well, this one. Let's stand to sing, Shine Jesus Shine. Oh no, I need to bless you first. Stand up anyway and I'll bless you. I was so excited to get to the song. The Lord be with you. May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine.
and grounded in love. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.